Please take a seat, or else you get you get you know what you deserve. Whereas in in London, I would say maybe some people are a bit more rude in that respect, and that they they maybe don't give up their seats when you should. That's why I would say that's one thing I noticed: respect for the barbershop. <laughs> Any others? What would you recommend to your best friend when you first come to Moscow? The first thing to do is never do it. Well, obviously, everyone that comes out from England says, I want to see Red Square, I want to see Lenin, I want to see Kremlin. Uh, I said, OK, I'll take you there, then you can see it, because I've seen it so many bloody times, I don't want to see it anymore. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen Lenin three times. I've seen the Kremlin three Terrible. times. Yeah, never seen it. Never seen it. He's, He's dead, though, right? He's dead, who cares? <laughs> well, yeah, my goes on so often yeah. to keep you. Yeah. Some of my friends actually went to see him. Have any of you ever heard of Madame Two Swords? Yeah. They do the wax. And so some of my friends <laughs> went to see him and they said, Are you sure he's real? I think Madame Two Swords may be I think he's wax. <laughs> so I don't know, you know, maybe. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they obviously want to see various places. Um, I would actually say, uh, again, Park Pobiedi is, is a great place to learn about. Um, it, you learn a lot about why Russia's like it is when you see places like that, when you see, see, see things that... There's a one thing that I always that I always try and say, as a student of history, is this, I get into a lot of arguments with Americans when, when they... Um, this is to do with the question, who won the war? And the Americans, maybe it's not their fault, it's their culture, it's, their, it's Hollywood, you know. Everything they see tells them, America won the war. And even now, they've started to make films about British war stories, and they've taken the British characters out, put Americans in, and say that Americans did things that British did, which is obviously, everyone, it's very central to your, to your country's identity, what you did in, in these great crisis times. And so I always make a point of saying to them, who won the war? Americans say, America won the war. And I said, really? And then, so I said, how many, how many Americans died in the war? Oh, combined British, American, French, I think they lost about 800,000. I said, do you know how many people Russia lost in the war? 27 million. And they say, what? And then they start to realize that actually, if it wasn't for what the sacrifice Russia did, America wouldn't have had anywhere like the same chance to have to, 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 to do what it did. So that's something to educate and, and to try and explain is that, you know, Hitler, Hitler was an enemy of, of, of all three. And a lot, it's, it's amazing how many, uh, particularly Americans, don't even know, a lot of them don't even know Russia fought in the war. And I was just, I was just shocked when they, when, when they, they didn't know that. So, yeah, something I always try and make sure I told them what, it, what it's really like. So yes, um, I would say part of Gurdy for that reason. And I would also say, uh, oh, I don't know, some of the bars and clubs, they've got to drink vodka. When they come out here, you know, they have and to they experience never it. Do and what do you recommend never do in Moscow? To never do in Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> never drink with a tramp. <laughs> um, never, try and, never try and take on a pack of dogs. Then, yes, yes. I mean, I, it is difficult. I went, I went to see Monte Cristo with my family when they came to visit, and I just, I hoped when I bought the tickets, I wanted them to see it, and I hoped that they maybe would have subtitles. They didn't have subtitles, so the singing was very good, the sets were very good. I didn't have a clue what was going on, but it was very enjoyable nonetheless. This is a, this is perhaps a difficulty for a lot of. Uh, people who speak English here. I would also say I went to the State Historical Museum. You know, I, I enjoy museums, but there's very little in English, so it's very difficult to know what's going on, um, which is perhaps something that can be quite easily fixed, I think. Um, but maybe for those reasons, I'd say some of the museums aren't, aren't, so, aren't so good to go to. But apart from that, I wouldn't say there's too much that I, wouldn't, that I would say don't go to. 
Yes, how long have you been here? Russian circus. Amazing. Yeah, amazing they are. And when I saw, um, I went to the one at Slipnoy Boulevard, and the uh, one of the acts was a woman who ran on on her own, and we all thought, what, what's going to come out? And then running behind her were 20 cats. She ran out with 20 cats and made them do all, all tricks. And I, I, I couldn't stop laughing. I thought it was the most hilarious thing I've ever seen in my life. It was brilliant. I don't know how she trained them, but all these cats were doing somersaults and climbing on little bars, and yeah, amazing. I would recommend that to anyone. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Can you compare uh, mass media in Russia and uh, mass media in uh, England? Um, the television and the newspapers, etc. Yeah. Um, I would say in terms of um, technical quality, that, that, that Russia doesn't understand uh, the best in Channel 1, and to, unless I get my Russian friends to help translate it. But if you look at, say, the studios and the camera work in Vesti and Channel 1, it's as good as any Western um, channel. It's actually pretty advanced. Um, obviously, where the differences start to arise is in their view of events. And the key, the key thing here we'll bring up uh, is um, South Setia. I arrived a few months after the end of the South Ossetian War, so it ended in, in August and I arrived in October. Um, and I spoke to people in Russia today. It was a big moment for Russia today because it was one of the main reasons it, it existed was to try and tell Russia's side of the story. And I wrote in, a, in my blog, when I was still in England when it was happening, I became very uneasy uh, about what the Western media was saying, about what the BBC, even the BBC, was supposed to be very straight and fair. I, I thought they have, they have slipped unconsciously into stereotypes, and almost like Cold War. People were saying the word Cold War. It's not the Cold War. It's, it's not a Cold War. It's a small war in the Caucasus. But people started to say these old phrases, like cliches, about the, the Russian bear and Russia's throwing its weight around and, and I, so I wrote in my blog that they are jumping too fast to these conclusions and they're not looking at the evidence and it was very hard for journalists, even our journalists, to get into South Ossetia. So the other thing that you always have to do if you're a journalist is say a lot of the reason journalists are unpopular in many stories is because they don't take any side. They mustn't take the Russian side or the all the Western side. So, admittedly, when when it comes to a war, a lot of journalists they do take more of a patriotic line. So it's understandable to see that. But the best way is to try and just stick to the facts. And the facts were very difficult to find out for a while. So, but it turns out that Russia was right. Russia Today was right. BBC, CNN, Fox News were wrong. And they, they cooked up the story that Russia had been waiting, waiting for the chance to attack Georgia. It was a lie. It's not true. Saakashvili started the war, and the facts are the facts. You know, he had his reasons why he wanted to do it. That's not that the story. And so um, that's a key comparator between the Western media and the Russian media. And obviously, in different, in different. Uh, stories, there's similar problems with 